27 degrees. Thanks, Elise. Well, Labor Day weekend marks the unofficial end to summer, but it also means it's one of the busiest times to move, and anyone who has packed up at least once knows that that can be a nightmare. But Curved New York says that you can make moving an opportunity instead of a chore. So this home decor site has a moving guide, and editor Amy Plitt is an expert with all of the tips that we're going to need, and we were just talking, Amy, first thanks for being here, during the break that you have moved in the 20 years you've been in New York at least 10 times. I know I've moved six times. So. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, I in moved four years. Yeah, in four years, that's a lot. I've moved 10 times in 20 years. I've lived in 10 different neighborhoods. Um, and you know, it's it's a tough thing to do, but I also really see it as an opportunity. Right, and why do New Yorkers move so much? I mean, it's partly the real estate market. You know, you sign a lease for a year, you sign a lease for two years, and you don't know necessarily if you're gonna be able to stay in your apartment. But also, I think people like the challenge of getting into a new neighborhood and new place and seeing what's what's there right and it's fun to explore different neighborhoods yeah, absolutely so which part is harder then is it the actual finding the apartment part or the moving itself I think that's going to depend on the person. I personally think it's fine, harder to find an apartment. Just I agree. <laughs> so many apartments uh, you're working Especially with. Especially this time of year. This time of year, you're working with budgets. You have, you might have a pet. You might have other constraints that make it hard to find a place. So I definitely think finding the place is harder. So once you find your place, you go through that tough step. Then mm -hmm. what is the game plan? I always wonder, should you <clears throat> wait for the movers to help you pack up your stuff? Is it better that you have everything organized in boxes? Get it organized first. That is absolutely key. You you are going to feel so frazzled if you wait to have your movers help you, so it's really important to start purging as soon as you know you're going to move, get everything organized, get a game plan out at least a month before you think you're going to move. And we've got this graphic here with all of these tips. Be realistic, mm -hmm. purge, sell your stuff, don't skimp on packing supplies, number your boxes, and measure and wait to buy new furniture. That's important. It's so important because you don't know what kind of space you're going to be working with um, until you find the apartment. So waiting until you actually know the size of your space before you find furniture, it's super key. Yeah, I tend to rush things. I'm like, oh, I, I just like this couch. I just want yeah, that one. No. And then it's you like, have to ah, wait. It doesn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Now, as for hiring a mover, mm -hmm. that's an important part of the whole process. Right. Um, do you have any tips? I think the biggest thing to do to remember there is to talk to your network, ask your friends who they've worked with, ask other people who you know have moved a lot, and you're going to get the best recommendations from them. I always ask friends, and I found a good mover that I've st stuck with at least a few times now. Okay, so once you find a good one, stick with them. Because I know one time I got a quote, and then once the actual moving day happened, it was hundreds more. Mm. So you don't want situations like that to happen. No, this is why the personal recommendation is key. Right. Now, another thing that all New Yorkers deal with is space. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are moving into very small studios, yeah. um, so space is a luxury. Do you have some tips on how to unpack in a small space or in terms of storage, how to best use it? Yeah, I like to pack by room, and often that means, you know, shuttling boxes from your kitchen to your living room or piling everything in the middle of one room and kind of figuring it out as you go along. Um, I, it just helps to do that first. And then storage-wise, there are so many great places to find good storage that fits into small spaces now. So it's really easy to find a thing that works for you. Right, because I'm thinking of Sex in the City, Carrie storing all of her shoes in the oven, <laughs> things like that. We don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. So what about once you're actually in, in terms of making this new place feel like home? Mm -hmm. Like I've been in a new place for six months now and I still have some bare walls. I just haven't gotten to getting yeah. it all done. Yeah, hanging the art first is such a great way to make it feel like home. And putting out things that maybe aren't art, but that are special to you, um, whether it's like a, something that belonged to your parents or a, you know, family photos or things like that. That's very important to just make that space automatically feel like home, even as you're still unboxing and organizing everything. So even, yeah, if once you're in and your stuff is there, mm -hmm. just to get it really done, just hang stuff on the walls. Hang stuff on the walls, put stuff around, make it comfortable, make it feel like yours. Well, Amy, that is some great advice for us. I need to use your advice, and our producer just moved, so she'll appreciate all of these That's tips. great. Everybody's moving. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. And the start of school, which is a lot of moving, also means the start of emergency drills where students learn and practice live shooter scenarios. And these lockdown drills can be very scary for many students. CBSN New York's Cindy Shu finds out what to do if your child gets anxious about the new safety exercises. 
Dawn Stanzik is getting her classroom ready and her kids are helping. Six-year-old Julia is her youngest and already knows she does not like emergency drills. I just don't like the drills, the noise, so I get nervous about the drills. With Julia and her students, Dawn focuses on safety when the kids get anxious. We just focus on the, we're trying to keep them safe and on the safety aspect of it. I don't think we get into too much detail, honest but simple.